Nice. I love it with Bob Marley behind you. All right. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure we're live. We're live on IG, not on YouTube yet. Well, uh, welcome everyone. This is our third episode. We're pretty excited. We're finally in the Art Network studio. Uh, we have our lovely guest here. She did a live video of her art. We recorded some great time lapses. We're going to be uploading those to our accounts. And uh, yeah, would you like to introduce yourself? Kind of say a little bit about who you are and where you're from, what kind of art you do? Where do I look? Wherever. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got you on a bunch of angles. Um, my name is Catalina Correa. I am 36. What was the question? What did you want me to? It's like a little like conversation, <laughs> just like who you are. Uh, so, I'm a mom. Okay, you're a mom. You're 36 years old. Yes. How 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 long have you been uh doing, you know that that my style? Arch. Like yeah, like seriously that you've well, been kind of. I started painting about six years ago, and it all started because I went to therapy. You know what? This chair is super squeaky. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Hold on, I gotta figure this out. It's not good. Sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> I don't think I can sit still for that long. Come on, technical difficulty. One second, stay tuned, stay tuned. You can keep talking. Oh shit, I don't know what the fuck to say. <laughs> um, let's see. I started painting about six years ago and I started because of therapy. I was going to therapy and she told me I needed a hobby. I was just telling the story of how I started painting. Oh, okay. That my therapist told me I needed a hobby. Well, your therapist told you you need a hobby? Yeah, because I would overthink everything. I've always been an overthinker. And so you never did art before? I did. And that's actually something funny because I wrote about this yesterday. I was always into art as a kid and even in high school, but I don't know. I kind of lost it at one point. I think what as you get older, you sometimes, not everybody, you tend to lose it because you're so focused on other things like going out and partying and all that <laughs> bullshit. That's more important at that age, in my 20s. So... Yeah. So you, so you, you're like what? You're in your early thirties, and you go to see a therapist just because you kind of feel maybe like a little what, like anxious and well, it's just funny. overthinking things. It's funny because I was working for a company called Regis. They sell office space, and or rent it out. And this woman came in to rent out an office space for her, um, you know, her practice, and she made a deal with my boss that my boss would give her like a deal for an office space and she would give us a deal for therapy. I wasn't looking for a therapist. Oh, okay. It wasn't like that. I wasn't thinking, oh, I need a therapist. I believe in therapy. Um, so yeah, I started doing that and I, I'm i glad I did it because it's changed my life completely. Awesome. And so now I know uh, <clears throat> we met actually at an art fair. Yeah. So that, that tells me that you're making an effort to sell your artwork. Yes. Uh, how long have you been in that, taking it from the therapeutic, the hobby side of it, how recently have you really been kind of pursuing the sales part and kind of making it a full, full-time thing? I think I've been doing it for about two years, but it hasn't been so consistent because I think, I, I can't speak for anyone else as an artist, but I can only speak for myself and... For me, to do an art show was very scary. I can do, I could show it on Instagram, all my paintings and stuff like that and get the likes. But when you're there face to face with someone and they're looking at your stuff and they're, they could be criticizing it in some way or maybe not. But yeah, you get, it's scary. It's a scary thing. When you mention like an art show, are you referring to like a gallery or a place that has your paintings or somewhere where you go set up, you put your art out and then like people walking by stop and look? I've or, done both. Oh, you've done both? I've done both. Yeah. But both are still, I call them all art shows. Art Whenever shows. I'm okay. going to display my art, it's an art show for me. Okay. Obviously, it's not the same. <laughs> probably. And so how, I know as an artist, 
myself uh, in those situations where people you mentioned like being critical or it's actually pretty entertaining when when you set up and there's uh, like uh, at Viernes Culturales, for example, or even at Thrift or Market in Wynwood, mm -hmm. you'll set up and there'll be hundreds of people who walk by in those few hours. And it's pretty entertaining seeing the different like types of people's reaction. Yeah. Some people will look at the artwork and, and kind of see the uh, effort put into it. And they'll just respect the amount of like time and thought that went into the artwork. Yeah. As where someone who looks at that exact same piece will be like, well, what the hell is that garbage? Or they'll like poke their friend and they'll be like, ha ha ha, look at that. Right. And then two seconds later, someone will go by and just be like, oh, wow, look at this. So I, I like to people watch in that sense when people are observing your artwork. But when it comes to like allowing people to form their own opinion and be critical of your artwork, as an artist, you have to be very like open to that you right. can't take it personally right i think by doing those things those shows and putting yourself out there you actually end up learning that obviously that way you know at the beginning it was hard for me when i wouldn't make money or i wouldn't sell anything just it was just it it, it feels personal obviously because this is your heart that's how i look at it it's my heart out there all my stuff, all my emotions are all on that canvas. So, do you do you feel like uh, you're you? Well, you you said it yourself that there was a point where maybe you weren't selling as much compared to to later. And one thing I I learned from setting up at art shows is it it really is a kind of about like pre presentation mm -hmm. of your work mm -hmm. and the professionalism of how you like showcase it kind of the the branding aspect yes. of you as an artist your business card the way you frame your product the way you wrap it up everything oh and, of course and it makes people not only feel comfortable in buying your work but in buying more work from you and following up with you i think sorry I don't, it's I, okay. <laughs> okay i don't know if i interrupted i think as well as like when you grow as an artist and you grow more confident and you show that to the people that are mm. coming to your booth, there's that difference too. When you first start out, you're not as confident. Yeah, and someone will ask you a question like, oh, uh, what uh, what, uh, what medium did you do this piece? And you yeah, get all like, excited. Oh, shit, I don't know. <laughs> or especially like for me, I don't know about you, I feel like you've been doing art for like since you were a baby, basically, since you came out of the womb. <laughs> not true. Well, true, but not, uh, not with the passion. Okay. But with me, since it was much more like of a therapeutic thing, fuck, I forgot my point. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit! Yeah, I, I lost that's, it too. That's a bad, bad situation for for that. Um, confidence. Well, yeah. So com confidence in the sense of like you've sold paintings, or your the more you sell, I think obviously the more confident you become. Of course, yeah. You know, so. And so I think uh, one of the directions, you know, of the podcast, this is just the third episode. Uh, I think one of the goals is since most of our viewers are either artists themselves or they're fans of artwork and they like to look at it, collect it, whatever the case. And then I also feel like some of our viewers will be people who used to doodle when they were younger or they secretly like to color or draw they they have everyone has that creative i agree part of their brain it's just a matter of how much you tap into it but for for the viewer sense i think one of the directions we want to take the podcast is is really uh teaching people and and advising people kind of like the tips and tricks of being an artist yeah and how to do it online, how to do it locally at your local art fairs, how to contact galleries, uh, kind of situations to get yourself into, other situations not to get yourself into, because also as an artist, uh, galleries, a lot of these markets and stuff, they charge you money. Yeah. And and it's people not don't, cheap. A lot of people don't know that. No. A lot of people think that, oh, you're there because you're selected. But most of the time you're paying for these things. And they're not cheap. No. Not at all. And you, you do get good recognition. Of course. Um, people do see your work. You do get those, quote, views. Um, 
but it's how, how many of those views of those people walking by can you convert into sales who are buying your work? And so I think if you add with, with all the opportunity that social media brings us now, I think if you can get local recognition by putting in the hard work, like going, setting up at art fairs, going to galleries, going to restaurants, going to businesses, doing murals, doing all this local work. But if you're missing the social media aspect of it, and not just having your profiles, I'm talking about really engaging into them, using Facebook ads, posting time lapses, posting slow motion videos, just creating your own content to your artwork. When you have all of that, plus you're going out into the community, I think that's really when it starts to click. And um, an example of that, uh, Atomico, I, all I know is his Instagram name and obviously I see his oranges all over Florida. Mm -hmm. He's been spray painting, I'm sure, for more than 15, time. 20, 25 years. You know, he's <laughs> he's like old school. He He's a master at spray painting and you'll see his oranges uh, everywhere. Yeah. And now if you go to his Instagram account, for example, he's extremely active in it. He's every post is like with someone like a business or another artist. He's always uh, doing trade offs, I believe. And he's on his story all the time. And he's really built a brand around his logo around who he is. Yeah. And that's why he has so much success. And so someone, for example, like my father, he's an amazing artist. He's an amazing painter. He can paint four or five paintings in a day that, you it's know, amazing. it's like good quality, freehand portraits, creative work, whatever. But, you know, he's 63, 64 years old and he makes an attempt at uploading on Facebook, little Instagram, little YouTube but it's not really to the point where it's like, hey, do you want to make real money off of your art? Right. And that's what the internet allows you to do. You can sell paintings to Europe, to A Like, it's just the future. Five, ten years down the road, the ability to ship things and sell things, it's going to be so vast that if you're not into that game now, you're going to miss out on a lot, a lot of, not easy money, but money that, you know, was well earned in your preparation for this technology age no it's true i i know one artist she actually i met up with her recently and she actually told me that all her sales are through social media i was like how the fuck is that possible like i'm trying and it's funny you say that because i'm running my mouth now about like what you need to do and all of that and i don't really sell any of my art on social media okay like i'm <laughs> trying to figure it out it's it's all a, a process that you it's a learning process. And so she process. she told you like hey like I just sell and she does she sell her she, work it's like pretty She has like she has money now because she of sells art. yes. Wow. She that's her business. That's all she does. What's her Instagram? Do you know it? Uh A E Art. Her name is Alejandra Estefania. Okay, yeah, we can put her in the bio. Yeah, Some artists she's, can check her she's out. She's amazing. Her artwork is fucking beautiful and she's an amazing person too she was very nice to meet with me and talk to me oh you met with her yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. i had messaged her on instagram i had met her that's one pretty time. cool that you reach out to these artists i know before the podcast you were talking about that. yeah because i i really wanted to understand the world that i was getting myself into and i wanted some type of guidance and at the beginning what i was telling you before at the beginning, when I first started, I reached out to some artists, local artists, which they will not be named. <laughs> and they, so you, they were male artists. Okay, okay. So and, you reached out to multiple like local yes, male artists yes. who are on Instagram. Who have somewhat of a, a name out there. Okay. Maybe not like... What did you send them? Just wanting to ask to see what they thought about my work and just to give me advice that's because i didn't know i didn't know what i was doing so i just felt like maybe i need to talk Reach to out. someone yeah and kind of find a mentor or yeah someone that's, to... i needed guidance okay. i didn't know what i was getting myself into so i reached out to the two of them uh separate obviously and the one I went to go see, he criticized my work. He said it was old lady work. It, like, he was just rude as fuck. And then the second one tried to hit on me. Like, he thought it was a date. He didn't mm. think it was me really. I was asking all these questions about art, but he, you could tell he kept 
flirting and hitting and eventually he made a pass at me and it was very uncomfortable. So, but that's why now I decided to start reaching out more to female artists because obviously I will connect more to a female mm -hmm. and I feel like they would be more honest to me. They're not, you know, trying to have sex with me unless they're alone. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. So yeah, and I met with Alejandra and she helped me. She gave me, she wrote down a list of things that she felt like that I needed to do to awesome. get started. So she recommended specifics. Yeah, okay. to make it an LLC, to mm. open up a business account, to have a website, to be legit business, you know? And I haven't done any of those things yet because obviously a lot of things... How, how recently did you meet up with her? I think this was maybe January, February. Okay. For, and, mm -hmm. and it is it is tough. Because it's all about the finances. I don't make a lot of money. So that's the hard part. And I know that can sound like an excuse and maybe it is, but... No, but I mean, you're <laughs> taking action. I mean... I'm trying. If, if you don't have money, it's it's not an excuse it's just a, a limitation something you have to work around and it sounds like you're doing that you're, you're you I'm reach trying, out yeah. to some artists uh, you're meeting up with them you're doing this podcast now and you reached out to me again not knowing we had a podcast yeah uh because it just started it. episode three <laughs> hopefully none of the phones uh die we're recording with multiple angles now we have one on live but i, I think we got a good setup here and so yeah, well, you are you are taking uh, steps to to better yourself and what you're doing. Do you see this taking you somewhere? Where, I, I mean, for for me, if I could just hang out and do art like all day, and then people just pay me money for like being creative, that would be ideal. Obviously, because you can do art wherever you are. No one's telling you how to do your art. Well, technically, not wherever. No. No. Well, wherever in a sense of like in the world, like you can oh, go okay. to like... Yeah, no, of course. I was going to say you can't go paint at Starbucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bitter. I'm a little bitter. I got kicked out of a Starbucks oh, for inside? painting there. Yeah. Like on your own work? I was painting there for two years. I was doing Regularly? my own work there. Yeah. Every day I would go there obsessively painting. Okay. And they had, the people that worked there told me I could do it. And then one day I walk in and I was getting ready to go paint and some guy was sitting next to me and he starts asking me all these questions and I was like, who are you? Like a Starbucks client? He was actually the vice president of Starbucks. Yeah, they're, that's what will happen. They'll like come into a location and then someone will be like, oh, there's this lady and she paints her art here all the time. But so he lives, I guess, close by or something. So I don't know, whatever. The whole point was, is it wasn't even the fact that he kicked me out. It was the fact that he was just the way he said it. He was rude. It was, it got embarrassing. I cried. Yeah. And Corporate dicks. Yeah. He had no empathy whatsoever and he called me a vandal and he told me that he was going to call the police if I didn't remove paint off of a chair, whatever. So, but yeah, it Sorry. was a lesson. It was a lesson that you learn in life and now I paint at home and it's reconnecting me back to my family because I was using Starbucks kind of as an excuse to go paint there to kind of Get away. Get away. That was my getaway. But then it became an obsession. Mm. I always wanted to be there. So how, how much time are you investing a day into your art? I'm now getting back into it because it took me a while. I was very angry and I, I didn't feel that drive oh, anymore. Oh, that put a little hiccup oh, in your sure. brow? Oh, for sure. It's an emotional thing. It affected me. Yeah, yeah, Imagine yeah. you're painting somewhere I mean, for two years. Yeah, you get a little territorial, right? Totally. <laughs> I peed on that spot. <laughs> you know, so like, not literally. No, not literally. Dog, dogly. <laughs> so yeah, that just it, I, I had to change my routine and my root. I didn't like that. So, but now I'm getting back into it again, and I feel like so I'm, two three hours a day. Uh, yeah, two three hours for now eventually it'll be more and okay and so the the point i was trying to make earlier that i sorry if i rambled on it. yeah no i it's definitely a, a learning curve having these podcast conversations and trying to uh step back a few sentences and kind of re 
organized wherever we were. I don't know. Uh, so are you are you selling your artwork on, on Instagram at all then? Are you still like trying to figure that out? Have you gotten any sales on Instagram? Uh, very few. I've noticed I get more sales through Facebook. Really? Yeah, it's weird. I, that's where I got the bulk, which is not a big bulk <laughs> of people. But yeah, I've gotten sales through Facebook. Uh, it's funny because what I decided to do when I first decided to open up an art page on Facebook, I didn't know that you had to pay to promote your page. Everything's money. Yes. So what I decided to do was with my personal Facebook page, I just started friend requesting a shitload of people that I don't know, or I may know, or they know somebody in my family, and then I would send them the link to my art page. So you just started marketing your own page. You exactly. Okay. Just never paid for it like that the other way. And you felt like that worked a little bit? A little. I know obviously if you pay, maybe you might get more business because they'll be able to promote it better for you. I don't know. I haven't tried yet. And so as an artist, I definitely like hearing that you are taking all these like little actions and stuff. It, it's all about networking. I mean, it's tough. It's tough to get into the community. Yeah. But once you once you get into your local art community, then the ball just starts rolling. It's true. You get your name out there. You do. Which is great. That's what I need. That's what we all need. <laughs> all of us artists. And so if you could kind of talk a little bit about how the therapeutic side like how you feel when you're doing artwork do you are you thinking about the artwork are you thinking about life do you just feel relaxed are you in the zone i get in a zone my mind kind of i guess the best way to say it goes blank that because what i used to do i would overthink a lot of things and it's just like this repetitive you know little hamster wheel going on in your brain and so for me to stop that i would go and paint I didn't start with dots though. I just started painting at the beginning just regular and then eventually I wanted to do Starry Night. I wanted to like duplicate it. Yeah. yeah. And not duplicate it, replicate it. <clears throat> but I couldn't do the wind swirls with the brush. Like I just... It just wasn't working out. <laughs> no. Not at all. So for some reason I decided to flip the brush over and do dots. You have more control that way. Did you... Uh, intuitively do that or did you see some dot art somewhere else to be honest I can't I, I don't can't know remember. I can't remember maybe maybe I have seen it in some way subconsciously it came back I don't I don't know but maybe uh, I probably have and so that dotting you remember the switch to dotting like that was a moment yeah for at you. first <laughs> no for sure at first it was just a little bit of dots and then eventually I created my Starry Night replica with complete dots. So Do you do you have a picture of that? I actually do. You wanna pull it up? I know your screen's a little cracked, but <laughs> Yeah, a little. And um, we're also gonna eventually get a, a co host here who who's live on a computer uh, with us who can search things up on Google, pull up pictures, pull up audio. And we'll, we'll have that here soon, too. And we just ordered our microphone, so it's exciting. Microphone, give me a minute. So you did this start. Do you still have the Starry Night piece? No, I actually gave it uh, to a real estate company that they were actually doing in a fundraiser. Like, it was a whole gala night, and I gave it up for auction. Did for, it sell that night? I believe so, and I think it sold for 150 It was a smaller size. Oh, okay. And yeah, I was happy because it went for, I believe it went for Live Like Bella. I'm not 100% sure. What's Live Like Bella? No, not Live Like Bella. I'm sorry. It was, it's a movement for, not a movement, but they were raising money for a little girl that passed away, I believe, of cancer. Okay. Um, but this was about another little girl that had passed away wow. of cancer. So I went and I donated that painting. I oh, felt awesome. a connection because the mother would post a lot of, things and as a mother myself i felt a connection to her yes, through beautiful. social media even though i've never met her so i like to give back a lot and if uh if any of you listeners like the uh 
opportunity that social media gives you as an artist and just everything it does for you. Uh, make sure to check out Mark Zuckerberg's congressional hearing. It's on YouTube. It's just pretty interesting seeing him respond to these questions from all these like old congressmen. It, it's kind of like a clash of, of two worlds and uh, it's definitely educational and it's uh, historical. So you, you should check that out on YouTube. Wow, cool. Is is this video good? Yeah, yeah. You got a good view of it? Perfect. Lift cool. it up a little bit. There you go. So this is Starry Night. That's my Is this like the first one you like sold? Like the first one kind of donation? Mm, that was I think that was my first donation, yeah. But I don't cool. I don't remember. I love it. Thank you. But you could tell the difference between that painting. How long ago was this? Oh God, I don't remember. A while. Yeah, oh, it had so. to be like at the beginning when I first started. I remember the question I was gonna ask. Okay. When you're working on your art, are you working on just one piece and you zone in on that one piece and you just work on it? You come back to it, you work on it, and that's it. You work it till you're done. Or do you work on a few pieces and you kind of hop from each one? I like, hop. So you do have a few pieces, like yeah, started a lot of pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. Somebody actually said that the other day. Um, I have a lot of pieces that are like maybe halfway done. Uh, I did an R two D two. I started it about a year ago, and I finished it. I put it away, and I finished it a month ago. And yeah, it just it's a thing of about feeling it. I don't know. I go mm. with all my my feelings. So if I'm not feeling that painting at that moment, I put it to the side and I do something else. That's how I work. Okay, so you go off of a feeling basis. It's not really like uh, yeah. you get like, uh, di not distracted, but like you get bored of working Well, no, on that too. One. Yeah, you get bored, especially I like I, with dots. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can get bored. Yeah, so you might be fucking putting a bajillion dots on there and you'd be like, I want to splat car... Splat cup <laughs> art it so up. Weird. Fluid art. <laughs> Splat cup. I'm sorry, but if you fill this, fill this up with paint, ah, and then you're like, <gasps> bam! <laughs> and then that shit looks like a splat. That's splat like, art. Yes. It's a messy. Hashtag splat art. It's messy, that's for sure. Yeah, because I noticed that. I mean, I... I have this piece started, I have oh, that cool. one, I have that one, I have that one, I have that one. I just, I don't know, I just I feel like I, if, if I had ADD art syndrome, I would definitely qualify. But I, I feel like maybe, I again, I don't know every artist, but maybe a lot of artists are like that. They just need, they have these, for me, it's, sometimes it's like you have this idea and you're like, okay, I want to do this and you start it. And then all of a sudden you're inspired for something else and you're like, fuck, I need to start that too before it goes away and yes, you forget. Yes. So it's, and non-artists like, don't understand that. So for all of you artists who have boyfriends, girlfriends, spouses, they might criticize you. They'll be like, why are you still working on that same piece? Oh, people do. I don't. I don't have people that say that to me. <laughs> no, I don't have a boyfriend that tells me anything. I guess it's because I leave all my started pieces everywhere. Oh, so. that's why. <laughs> that's why. Now, I usually try to hang it up or just put it in a corner somewhere. Stash it. Somehow, yeah. But nobody really goes in and checks that shit out anyway. They leave me alone, which is good. That's cool. And so what's your game plan now? Like you kind of know what you need to do. You need to build that business around like your brand and just kind of keep pushing it. What, what's your game plan? Well, I actually recently started uh, writing a blog because that's another thing that I've always enjoyed. Very therapeutic for me as well. Um, so I'm incorporating my art into the blog and basically telling my story on how I started my art and that what we talked about earlier is that everybody has the artistic ability to do something. You know, I'm not great at drawing. I can't draw, but I can manipulate the paint to make a beautiful picture. And so I do feel like people can do it. And if I share my story, then maybe someone that's going through something that needs to clear their mind, maybe they might go to art or start cooking or whatever the fuck Which they choose totally to do art. 
Yeah, no, the, exactly. Cooking is art. Like to the maximum. Because I, I've seen some beautiful food that some my friend has made and she's a chef. So, it's yeah, no. Like it, it mixing is the paint is like mixing the... Yeah. The everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so. yeah. <clears throat> so, you you like what's your plan of attack like because i know i know i have uh, like create a website um run these accounts market this market that it's a lot of things to do you know you, i write them down i prioritize them i'm trying to write an ebook i'm doing this podcast i'm working on my website i have my artwork it, it is really difficult to to like tackle things and just completely uh, like do it right so what would you say you you want to do? Like you what you want to build a website? Boom! You want to yes. build a YouTube channel? Like what what would you say the top five things as an artist that you want to do? <clears throat> I want a website. I want to build a website. Okay. Um, I already started my blog. And oh, the, the blog. Yes. So the website and the blog is the blog through the website. Uh, like where do you upload that. it like where like what's blog your... spot okay so you have that as your host yes blog spot yes okay, okay. yeah and then obviously my website for everything like okay. the art and whatever else so website <clears throat> get the blog rocking yeah okay i sell jewelry i paint jewelry that's so right. that's another thing that i want to get more uh because i have an etsy store so i want to start being more active in that because I'm not as active in trying to do my business on Etsy. Uh, social so media. So Etsy, Etsy for like focus kind of on jewelry. Yes. So you have your website, your blog, Etsy for jewelry. And I eventually do want to write a kids book. A kids book. Yeah. Which you illustrate, yes. right? Yeah. Would you write it too? Like illustrate and write it? Well, like full produce it? What I would, I want to write it. My son would draw the pictures and I would paint the pictures. Like, you oh, know, he's an that artist would be also? my mock-up. He is. I actually have done a lot of his drawings. Like I've painted his drawings. Oh. He is tourism. Oh, okay. So art has been beneficial for him in that way because that's his way of expressing himself he's extremely artistic and i don't know i just i want to basically have this brand this eventual company hippie monkey art for him to leave it as a legacy that cool. was my whole idea in the first place w so. did this kind of form after <clears throat> you met with that first lady artist who kind of was telling you like business no, no this has always been the goal from the very beginning when i started my art uh i want this to leave for my child you know if i could give him something it would be this so that's, that's awesome. the goal that's and do you we uh we will we will have guests on the show who talk about goals we're big goals people uh we'll talk about our youtube goals everything uh do you like have your goal written down do you have it definite do you just think about it all the time what is your goal to you in a physical sense being financially stable with my art? Yeah, not like what is the goal. Okay. Like what do you do to like constantly like remind I yourself do write, of your No, goal? I have written it down. I actually bought like all of, after I met this girl, I bought a notebook. I started writing everything down. You know, like I'm really trying to be much more structured because I wasn't. I was always like all over the place. And just seeing her and talking to her and her writing this list down did something for me kind of like little fire under my ass showing that she's an artist and she's doing it and she's yeah and she's professional yeah. as well like mm. with her like she just knows what the fuck she's talking about you know and she's always on social media she's always posting stuff and that's what I've been trying to start doing now myself because that was always my weakness. I didn't like to be on my phone all the time, but I have to realize that I need to do it. And there <clears> is <throat> a, a bunch of things that I'll get to you this week. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I'm making a ebook that is focused on artist growth on Instagram, kind of just 
a basic guideline. It's the first version of the book. It's the free sample. Uh, later on, I will make a more detailed uh, guideline on, you know, just tips and tricks for artists in, in the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm working on that ebook this week, which I'll make sure to get to you. Okay. And then there's also a bunch of other new tools that you can use. Uh, there's bots. So like when you hear things like oh, all this stuff about the elections and oh, social yeah. media and Russia and China. So these bots are uh, basically like, you know, software engineers, they'll program uh, code to work like a robot, like artificial Instagram intelligence. Uh -huh. So there's bots now that are available in websites and things that you can not only preset all your posts and preset some comment engagement, it's like simple things like that, but it'll actually uh, respond to people who send you friend requests, people who send you DMs, people who comment on your photos, it'll preset all your posts, really? it'll engage you with other local accounts. But the thing about it is uh, people will overuse the bots. And so Facebook owns Instagram, obviously, they, they will regulate it. Okay. So you just kind of have to use it as like a little like, you know, like a little help. Okay. And so I'll definitely show you some okay. of those yeah, that would cool, be cool things this week. Thank you. Yeah, and so uh, the ebook we are working on it. It'll be on our website soon. Everyone can download it. It's very informative. Uh, teach you some cool things, and we're also gonna give you a a premiere package okay. from our website. So we're gonna put you on all of our accounts. We're gonna post your time Thanks. lapses. We also had some live videos of you. Uh, what's your Instagram again? And Hippie and Monkey Art. Hippie Monkey Art. And you're based out of Miami? I was born and raised here, yes. Born and raised here. Mm -hmm. And uh, where can people see you? Like, where are you setting up? Where? What do you have coming up? Um, I'm probably going to be doing Viernes Culturales again, which is the last Friday of this month. I believe it's the 27th. And what is Viernes Culturales for those who don't speak Spanish and cultural have no clue what that means? Sorry, Cultural Fridays. Cultural Fridays. And why is it in <laughs> Spanish? What? Why is it called? Because it's in Little Havana. <laughs> Little That's Havana. why. Okay. And we're in Miami. <laughs> right by Domino Park. Yes, right by Domino Park. It's really cool event. And Patty, I love her. Yeah, she's super nice. Whoever wants to do that show should go talk to Patty because she's fucking awesome. And it's not just an art show. It's a, right. It's yeah. a cultural Friday. Yeah. It's about uh, three, four three, four blocks of 8th Street. Uh, heading towards Brickle by Domino Park, Little Havana. Right by Ball and Chain. Ball and Chain. And it's pretty awesome. Clubbers. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome because there's live music. There's, there's five to ten ca uh, galleries that are open. Yeah. There's a DJ. There's people dancing salsa. Uh, there's art and craft vendors. And the streets, people are walking on the streets. It's definitely awesome. It but is. And you get to meet cool, cool new people. Because there's a from lot around of the tourists. World. Yes. A lot of tourists there, which is great because the exciting thing is, is when you sell something there, it's going, it somewhere. could go to Germany, it could go to France. You Chile, don't know. Yeah. 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 And, and I was just uh, thinking about that the other day. I was, I don't know, just, just thinking and I was like, wow, that little like drawing I did, it's in Texas and this one's here and this one's here and someone's looking at it. Not just the person who bought it, but their friend who's visiting them. I, I always think cool. that. I always think that when somebody commissions me for something, I'm like, oh, my painting's gonna be in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool. Awesome. And so you're gonna be uh, there. Uh, do you have any other events or? For now, not yet. Have you done the Thrifter Market in Wynwood? One time, I did a show for. I, yes, I did it with them one time. I actually won it because I had Instagram like a yeah from Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do well there, but I think what it day was, of the week was it a Thursday or Friday? I think it was a Friday. They usually give away the like Thursday or Friday days. Okay, yeah, it was. There wasn't anybody there. I'll tell you what though, that like setup, like Winwood is the art scene, right? So even if you're going to like the thrifter market, and there's a lot of vendors there. There's people who sell sunglasses. Yeah. People who sell like clothes. In my opinion, if you're reselling something and you didn't make that shit, first of all, you Amen. should A, pay more money. 
Amen. A, you should either pay more money or B, the artist should get a discount. You're going to get some pissed off people. <laughs> it's the truth. I if agree you want, with you, If you though. want to have a good market, you, these are the kind of things you need to do to get the good artists to come. Right. No, I agree. Because if you go to these art fairs, there's not good artists. But there, sometimes artists they're not even art. It's not art. It's shit that they buy online, mass produced, yeah. and then they sell it for $2. Yeah, That's whether it's like sunglasses or like uh, like smoking weed supplies like people or, just go to smoke shops you don't right. need to sell that at the market and, and so for so artists should be in the best spots at the event not only should they be at the best spots they should either pay less or the other people should pay more yeah secondly uh those are so valuable because if you have your marketing and your instagram and youtube if you have all your social media stuff good your business card good it's just such a good marketing opportunity my dad and i were there and the head uh producer for citizens watch mm -hmm. he produces their commercials their photo shoots he just shows up on set doesn't do anything with technical cameras nothing he just shows up on set talks to the models, talks to the camera people. And he's just like, you do this, you look here, you're not smart. Like he's just coordinating it, right? Right. Anyways, they had a, a shoot down here in Miami, a Citizens Watch shoot. And he was with like his business uh, part, not business partner, coworker or something. And they went to the thrifter market and he just passed by our tent. And he just asked my father and myself if, we were able to like replicate something realistically, like make it look identical. <clears throat> and uh, I was like, of course, my father's been painting for like what fifty years, and he can copy anything, do anything, That's blah blah amazing. blah. So it's really awesome. He put us up for a commission, a fifteen hundred dollar commission. Holy shit! It's a big ass painting. It was like four feet high by eight feet wide. Oh wow! And we uh, painted it. Well, my father painted it. Uh, I typed up the little agreement, collected $500 of the money up front, talked to the guy, kept the rapport good. You, you know, you don't want them to feel like they're going to be taken advantage of. Right, of course. And you want them to also feel like you're going to give them a good product for, yeah. for what they're buying. He lives in New York City. He has a pretty cool condo in Manhattan, uh, what he told me. And so he sent me a picture and... That painting is there oh, and it's exciting. up and it's just cool the whole progression and, and so if you go to these events these galleries these marketplaces and you're an artist and it costs you money and you're not selling try to just look at the bigger picture try to market yourself as an artist try to network try to meet other artists try to collab with them because you might go to 10 events spend $80 per event that's 800 bucks let's say hypothetically you didn't sell one piece of work you look at those events and you're like fuck man i just lost 800 bucks right no one likes my art this is bullshit but if you kind of have a different mentality and you're like all right i'm gonna go to these 10 events i'm gonna lose 800 dollars, but i'm gonna make the best contact right and when you kind of just do things like that you know you have to think positive because if you don't think positive, all that is going to affect you. And that happened to me, I think it was like two weekends ago. I was at an art show in Fort Lauderdale. It was Fat Village. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. <clears throat> I wasn't selling shit and I was getting frustrated and I kept getting people, oh, it's amazing, it's beautiful, <laughs> I love your work, whatever. But that wasn't filling what I needed at that moment, which I wanted money. <laughs> so I was texting my friend uh, on Instagram. I was messaging him and I was asking him, like, I don't know what to do. Like, you get almost like slightly devastated in a way. Yeah. Especially when you're in need of money. You know, you're expecting, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to do well in Fort Lauderdale. There, they're going to spend money on my shit. Like, that's exactly what it's I so thought. It's so funny you say that because my dad, he's so funny. He always says shit like that. He'll be like, I'm going to paint this kind of painting because this will produce this money. And if we go to uh, Naples, if we go to Fort Lauderdale, they have money. They're retired. They'll drop that money. Thousand, two thousand, three thousand. Yep. Yeah. Nope. That's not fucking true. <laughs> <laughs> just, I learned just, the hard way. Well, they, they exist. They're out there. But it's just those pre-conditioned, uh, you know, mindsets. They're just 
they're not like accurate. They're just. But what the advice that my friend gave me, he told me, he said, if you go into it always thinking about the money, then basically it's like it's not going to be fun anymore for you. And I need to go back to the basic of why I even started this in the first place. The love of the art because it's helped me emotionally and grow as a person. So that's, I think, why now I've started to paint again because of all these things that happened to me recently, especially. Like, you have to just be aware. As an artist, I think you have to be aware and pay attention to the signs because I feel like there are signs. They're teaching you something. You got to be positive. I love it. Well, I think... Uh... We had a pretty good conversation here. I had fun. It was fun. We're definitely going to have you back Thanks. again on the podcast. And if you'd like to uh, bring another artist friend, I'll call that would be cool. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. We should have like a huge group, a panel. A panel? I don't know. <laughs> panel of artists that just talk about their shit. You know what would be pretty cool? What? If we had like in each of these corners in here, uh -huh. like, like live art. Uh-huh. And we put like, you know, the different angles of the a cameras camera, and yeah. we had like just a dope ass like live, like live art, art as gallery you're talking showing. and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Your podcast feed. I think that would be badass. There's a lot of things that can be done um, yeah. in terms of uh, an art podcast. Uh, I did some homework on YouTube. Not not a lot of art stuff on there. Okay. And so I my goal with the art network is to just travel around and just produce an episode every day and build okay. this little community oh back to what i was saying earlier uh, we're going to give you the premiere package okay so, so <clears> some <throat> posts on our different accounts we post your story we're going to put your link uh in your username and our bio okay and uh if you could just repost a little bit about the podcast yeah. to, your, to your followers we'd appreciate that uh today we shot live on instagram we did not shoot live on youtube next episode we will give that a shot and uh, we're going to try today. I think we have a few more minutes. What, what time do you have? It is 2.43. Okay, you got like 15 minutes probably? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going we're gonna to end the uh, podcast. And we're going to go shoot a quick boomerang drone shot. Okay. It's pretty cool. <laughs> You're going to teach me new things. <laughs> we're going to put it in the, in the video. Kind of give you guys like an idea of where we're shooting this uh, from. Not really our location. I don't really care about that. But it's more <laughs> about giving you guys like a like a bird's eye view of where the podcast took place. And I think that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, because like we're, you guys are seeing us here talk live. All you see is this corner. Yeah. We're in Miami and it's beautiful. And it is. So we're going to go outside. Uh, I'm going to walk her out and then we're going to turn the drone on and do a little drone boomerang. It's not too windy. And then when we post the video on YouTube... You guys will kind of see where we shot it from. And uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of different things on the podcast. Thank you for everyone who watched. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to. And if you would like to be on the podcast yourself, uh, we basically will go as far south as Homestead, up all the way to West Palm Beach to shoot an episode. If you can't come here, uh, I recommend you come here. This would be the best scenario. But we want to get an artist five, six, seven artists a week. We want to book this up. We want to produce a bunch of episodes, teach the viewers. If you're an artist or you just enjoy art, we want to teach you things. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. That's all Thank I got to say. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming I by. Fun. We had a great combo mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you on the show again. And cheers. Bye. 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 <laughs> Let me go turn the live one off. And... <laughs> okay. Let me back this shit up. That was fun, man. 204 viewers. Shut up. That's cool. Just from this one. Oh, that's just one? Yeah. And then where's the... This is... Is this another one? So these no. are just recorded, uh, like, for the video later. How many... What's the most you've ever had when you've done one so far? Like, views? Yeah. Well, just see your camera. Alright, so that one recorded for 12 minutes. Oh, it died?